So this is the setup for the question. And I guess the question itself is fairly simple, but I want you to highlight it specifically because this is a really common arrangement that you will see when you work with the circuit. So colloquially, or maybe even officially, it's called the voltage divider. And it's a kind of a thematic theme that you will see, um, not just dealing with registers, but dealing with registers and capacitors, or registers and inductors. When you are building passive filters, the starting place for design of things like low-pass filter, high-pass filter is, um, is the voltage divider. So, um, so I want you to <laughs> talk a little bit about this and work out this question. So uh, as the question says, this rather simple circuit is known as a voltage divider. The symbol consisting of three, uh, so uh, this is the, so that's the reference for ground. Um, for widely, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's uh, work out the question A and I'll briefly say why it's called voltage divider. So it asks, what is the output voltage of the circuit here in terms of these? Okay, um, so I think the way to do it is whenever you're solving the, a circuit, uh, it's a really useful to have uh, information about the amount of current uh, through different branches of circuit. Here, you know, it's actually a pretty simple circuit, voltage in series with the two registers. So the working out the current there actually will be simple, you know the equivalent resistance of these two series registers will be R1 plus R2. So we do that equivalent resistance. Uh, using Ohm's law, the amount of current through this circuit with the one equivalent register will be amount of voltage you apply divided by the equivalent resistance. is equal to um, V in divided by R1 plus R2. So that's the amount of current. And knowing the current, I say it's useful because once you know this one dynamical quantity, then any other dynamical quantity that you are asked about, you can solve for that in a single step. So for example, they are asking us about V out. And that looks like that's the voltage change from zero volt here to this point here, delta V. If I know the current through R2, then I can use Ohm's law again. The current times this resistance will give me the voltage change across R2. And it should be a drop from here to here. So looking at the circuit, no current is going out here. So all of the current going out here, this is the, uh, the I that we calculated. That is the current through R2. So we can work out, oh, so the delta V here is the current V in divided by R1 plus R2, R2 times the amount of resistance, R2. And let me simplify this expression a little bit. Simplifying it, the V out is equal to the kind of the ratio of the resistances, R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in. And this uh, appearance of expressions is, that's why it's called the voltage divider, because it divides the input voltage according to the fraction that you can calculate using the resistance values. So the value of the resistance that the voltage measurement is across divided by the total resistance that the series element thing is. So like if you had, um, if you had, I don't know, a nine volt input, and let's say you want to get a, a five volt out, then a really easy way to build a circuit that does exactly that would be to pick a resistance values of R1 equals, I don't know, 400 ohm, and R2 of 500 ohm, uh, build that, and you will have five volt output. Now, if you are actually doing that, then there are some things to uh, worry about. So when the circuit, the voltage divider circuit is actually in usage, you won't have a V out that doesn't connect to anything. So that's what this load resistance setup is illustrating. It's showing you the setup where 
this output voltage is connected to something that uh, draws some power, does some stuff. So there's a load resistance. Let's uh, redo this calculation and see how the expression for VR changes. So we can do more or less the same analysis we had before. I guess um, what I need to do is I need to insert an additional step here to calculate what I'm going to call R2 prime. It's actually an equivalent resistance for these two registers in parallel. So that calculation would go like 1 over R2 prime is equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over RL, or solving for R2 prime, it'll be, I'm just doing that mental math in my head, <laughs> RL divided by RL plus R2 times R2. I think that's right. Uh, in the limit where R, RL goes to infinity, this will be uh, this value. Yeah, this ratio goes to 1. And in the limit where RL goes to 0, this thing goes to 0. Um, so with this value of R2 prime, and we can actually just reuse the rest of the stuff. Because if uh, I'm imagining replace this with a single register, then everything is back to what this was. So I could have said, so here the answer was R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And here, I can basically, wherever I see R2, I can replace them with the R2 prime. So it'll be R um, L over RL plus R2 times R2, that's R2 prime, divided by R1 plus the same thing, RL over RL plus R2 times R2. And uh, I guess... Uh, there's a simpler way to write it, but I think that's uh, good enough for the answer to put into uh, my output math. And, uh, and I will show you the thing to caution about. So this is going to be, let me just use this here, variables. R2 divided by R1 plus R underscore 2 uh, times, oh, uh, sorry. I always forget this. There's times of V in here. And also there's times V in here. Because it's asking for voltage. It's not asking for the ratio of the voltages. Um, so V in. Maybe that's the right variable. Okay. So that's uh, A. And for B, again, you can simplify it. But let me just uh, use this. I can just do copy, paste, and just to do a uh, modification of the expression here. Uh, And the way my open math evaluates these, it does it by um, uh, plugging in some random numbers. So, um, so the fact it, it doesn't check for if it's simplified or not. Uh, it, there are things I can do to the check. I, I don't because I don't uh, really care that much about simplification. And in this context, I don't think simplifying it gives you any insight. So I'm fine just leaving it in that form. So, so yeah, that, those are the answers. And this is the thing I want you to caution you about. So let's uh, take the example that I used. Imagine I had a 9 volt power supply that I wanted to get down to 5 volts for some usage. So my in vol input voltage is 9 volt. And I chose these two register values based on what's on my, in my drawer. And let's say they seemed reasonable at the time and I picked them. So... Let's say I have this hooked up to some load that's uh, drawing um, that it's a fairly large amount of um, um, draws. Uh, it has a fairly large resistance. Let's say my load was uh, uh, 10 kilo. Then um, so my V out will be. Oh, let me see. Uh, let me just write it out. My V out will be R2 divided by. R1 plus R2 times V in. So in the case of the ideal case, I get 5 volts as I want it. But when I replace this with the new value of a voltage that's actually going to come out of it here, 
then this is what trends up. So I replace the R2 on the numerator with R2 prime, and let me replace the uh, R2 in the denominator with what's going to be R2 prime. So when I do that <laughs> and put this through uh, decimal approximation, with this 10 kilo ohm load, instead of getting 5 volts, I get 4.9 volts. Maybe that's perfectly fine. You're building 10% tolerance, you can handle as low as 4.5 volts, and you're fine. And if that's the regime where your circuit worked, that's great. But imagine a different scenario where your load resistance is, I don't know, maybe as low as a 50 ohm. Um, there are some devices that's built around the 50 ohm um, terminal, terminal, not, um, terminal resistance? Uh, well, 50 ohm uh, um, <laughs> resistance. Then that same expression, now it's getting 0 0.92 volts. <laughs> um, so you might think then, okay, so I guess uh, I want these resistances to be really low. So let me say R1 is 4 and R2 is 5. So that um, when I'm uh, trying to use it with the RL of 50 ohm, it'll work fine. Okay, that's one way to tackle the problem. And what I would leave it for you is to... Um, Try working out the power dissipation for this uh, circuit with this R1 of 4 ohm and R2 of 5 ohm and applied voltage of 9 volt. How much power this dissipates passively with no load connected? <laughs> so, so, you know, that's the kind of the things that uh, you have to worry about, you have to design around when you're working with a real practical circuit. So in real practical circuits, when you need to go to lower voltage, um, you only use a, a voltage divider for that specific purpose uh, when you are in low power situation uh, with the active circuits, semiconductors, operational amplifiers, transistors. There are more efficient ways of doing it uh, just to using voltage divider. It, it's a good, great way to get a particular value of voltage that you are aiming to get and there's an application of that all over the place um, it's not a very practical way to and or efficient way to do a voltage regulator that will reduce a particular input voltage to a lower voltage as a kind of power source so anyways i want you to cover that so i've done it now <laughs> i don't need to do it again um,